Hey, Riley. Yeah? What'll you have? Pap's Blue Ribbon. What else? Smoother, smoother, smoother flavors. That's the Sparkle Millions' favor. Taste that smoother, smoother flavor. Pap's Blue Ribbon beer. What'll you have? Pap's Blue Ribbon. Internationally famous Pap's Blue Ribbon. The finest beer served anywhere. Presents The Life of Riley, starring Scott Glenn as Riley. With a sincere wish for good weather everywhere, we apologetically report to the rest of the nation that this day dawned bright and sunny in the part of California where Chester A. Riley lives. He rose early, ate a hearty breakfast, and since the aircraft plant is closed today, Riveter Riley decided to put his holiday to good use by doing various odd jobs around the house, jobs that he'd neglected to do for some time. So, Riley dutifully took his tool chest, went out into the backyard, and for his first chore, began to put up a new hammock. He hammered a large nail into the tree. He hammered a nail into the other tree. And then he put up the hammock and stretched out in it to test the hammock and see if the nails were secure enough to support his weight. Now, that was at 10 o'clock. It is now 12.30, and the test is still going on. Ah! I'm shot! I'm shot! Pig, why did you do it? Take it easy, Pop. I didn't hit ya. What? Junior... What are you doing with that gun? I was just shooting at that bulge in the tree there. Well, you hit the bulge in the hammock. Oh, God. You want to kill somebody? Well, gee, Pop, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you honest. But it's only a BB gun. It can't hurt you. Can't hurt me? Oh. Well, what's all the yelling about, Riley? Why are you fitting so funny? Well, your son almost blew my brains out. Junior? I'm sorry. Honest, Pop. That's some son you've got. A sniper. Don't you got nothing better to do than going around taking pot shots at people? I'll shoot at tin cans. Yeah. Now you be more careful with that gun, Junior, or you're not going to be allowed to play with it. Some kid. When I was your age, I didn't go around shooting my father behind his back. Why don't you go play baseball? Ah, uh, there's nobody to play with. Most of the gang went camping up to Big Bear Lake for the weekend. Well, why didn't you go camping? Because you said you wouldn't spend the money. Um, there's always excuses. Anyway, there's other things to do besides going camping. You can have fun right here in town. Why don't you go swimming? The only place to go around here is the Y. Well, why don't you go there? Because you want to give me the $7 to join. Oh, first I didn't want to give you the money for camping. Now I don't want to give you the money for the Y. Next thing you know, you'll be calling me a tightwad. Go on, say it. Say it. I dare you. Say I'm a tightwad. Well, you are a tightwad. I ain't asking you. I'm asking him. Can I go now, Pops? No. You stay here. Now, you listen here, young man. You've got two weeks Christmas vacation ahead of you, so you better find something better to do with your time than hanging around the house all day. Well, at least it could be constructive, Riley. What do you want him to do? Well, let him get a job. Go to work. But it's my vacation. So what? When I was your age, I worked every school vacation. I was ambitious. Why, one summer alone, I had a job with an ice cream man. Then I got a job helping a milkman. Then I helped run a corner newsstand. Then I got a job in a livery stable. What's the matter? Couldn't you hold a job? Uh, don't be such a wise guy. There's one rule in life you ought to know, and that rule is learn the meaning of hard work when you're young like I did, and you'll get somewhere when you're old. Like you did. Well, there's an exception to every rule. Now look here, Junior. Tomorrow morning, you look through the want ads. Oh, Riley, he's only 14. Now, he's studied hard in school all term. Let him have a little fun. Sure, I want to have some fun. Fun? That's the whole trouble with you kids today. That's all they think of. It's fun, fun, fun. But work? No, no. Let the old man work. Well, why shouldn't he have some fun? A boy's got to learn to stand on his own two feet. He's got to learn to be self-reliant. That's the American way. Ain't you ashamed, Junior, coming to me every week, week after week, for your allowance? No. No? You're not ashamed to ask me? Why should I be ashamed? I ask you, but you never give it to me. Again with the money. Now, just for that, I'm going to teach you a lesson, Junior. You ain't getting a cent out of me all during your vacation. Pop! 
Pa. If you want money, you'll have to work for it. Now, Riley, why don't you think about it? And later when you feel better, we can... I mean it. My head is made up. Work. Work. That's my motto. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a lazy loafer. Aw, but Pa... Now stop swinging this hammock. I want to take a little cat nap. Wake me in six hours. Hi, Peg. Oh, you're home early, dear. Yeah, I walked instead of taking the bus. Where's Junior? Out on the bo back porch, I think. He was a minute ago. Oh, did, did he look for a job today? Well, he disappeared right after he got home from school. Maybe. Maybe? You don't know? I got more important things to worry about. What's more important than your boy's future? I want to know if he looked for a job today. Well, then go ask him. All right, I will. Junior! Junior! I'm, I'm out here, Pa! Oh, Junior! Oh, oh, hi, kids. Hi, Mr. Riley. Hi. Junior, uh, did you look for a job today? No, Pop. I was... I thought I told you you were going to work this vacation. Oh, I am. But I'm going into business for myself. What? Yeah, I'm mowing lawns. Me and Julie and Winnie here. We're partners. See, if we can get a hold of ten bucks, we can rent three lawn mowers. And with the three of us working, Boy, we'll clean up. <laughs> Junior, you're still a child <laughs> going into business for yourself. Anything to get out of work. But, Pop, this way... You'll we... never make a go of it. You know the kind of neighborhood this is. Every guy mows his own lawn. You don't. Or gets his wife to do it. Well, yeah, but if we can get the lawn Don't mowers... you know the only way to make an honest dollar is to put in your eight hours every day and collect your pay at the end of the week? But we can make this pay off. If we can only get the lawnmowers. Sure, Mr. Riley. We can make oodles of boodle. I figure we can make it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. At least it's better than loafing. You're making a stab at work. I'll give you the ten bucks. Oh, you will, Pop? Yeah. There you are. Oh, boy. Thanks, Mr. Riley. You're a pal. We'll pay you back, Pop. Ah, forget it. But believe me, it's just throwing away good dough. You'll never make a go of this. Oh, sure we will. We got 40 customers lined up. Five dollars each for a month. That's two hundred dollars a month. And gosh, in twelve months, that's, um, twenty-four hundred dollars. Partners, I think we can make a go of this. Partners? What does he mean, we? Well, it's my ten bucks that's putting you in business. What does he mean, my? You gave it to us. Gave it to you? Ah, oh, you kids. I got a lot to learn about business. I didn't give it to you. I ain't no philanderer. I'm an investor. I'm bringing in the capital, ain't I? Well, if you don't want to give it to us, then lend it to us. And we'll pay you 4% interest, just like a bank. Oh, you want a loan? Well, okay. What's your security? The security? Well, sure. That's what the bank would want. Pop, I give you my word. You'll get the dough back. Ha! What bank would take the word of a Riley? <laughs> nah, I've been all through that. Okay, I guess we'll have to make you a partner. Yeah, I guess so. And everything was going along so nice. Well, what are you worrying about? I'll be fair. I'll let you kids have a controlling interest. All I want is a measly 49%. That means 51% for the three of you. And any time you want to get rid of me, all you have to do is call a meeting of the stockholders, and you can vote me out of the corporation. Oh, can we do that? Well, sure. I'll draw up the bylaws, and we'll make it legal. Now, anything else we need? Oh, hey, yeah. We need some dough to buy weed killer. It's two fifty a gallon. Two fifty? Huh? Why, that's ridiculous. I know where to get some weed killer for seventy-five cents a gallon. Ah, oh, that stuff's no good. Yeah, the other stuff's guaranteed. Now look, it's all the same stuff. It's just different labels. The weeds don't know the difference. But Pop, that... Look, don't try to tell me about weed killer. You get the 75 cent stuff. Okay. All right. All right, Pop. You see there? I just saved you two and a quarter. You need a guy like me in the organization. Well, okay, kids. Get the lawnmowers and the weed killer and get to work bright and early tomorrow. The Riley Lawn Mowing Company is now in business. And remember our motto, don't let the grass grow under your feet. Mm 
Hi, Peg. Kids here yet? Yeah, they're here. Ah, oh, swell. Now, just a minute. Uh, no, I got a meeting, Peg. That's what I want to talk to you about. Now, why don't you leave those kids alone? Well, Peg, now, I'm... I'm now, helping. listen to me. They're better off without your help. Well, that's a nice remark to state. Well, the way you talk, you'd think I was trying to swindle those kids. Well, I didn't mean it like that. I only think you could... I couldn't the... even if I tried. I got 49% of the profits. They get 51%. Well, why should you get so much? Well, how do you know there'll be any profits? Suppose they don't vote any. Well, that's right. Right. They don't have to vote any profits. No. With their 51%, they control the vote. <laughs> oh, Riley, I don't think you were very smart on this deal. No? <laughs> oh, don't you worry. I thought of everything. On paper, they control the vote. But you don't think Junior will vote against me. <laughs> no. The two of us will decide what profits are taken out. And if the other two kids step out of line, well, we'll just vote them out of the corporation. <laughs> oh, Riley, you wouldn't do that. Peg, there's no room for sentiment in business. Besides, it'll be a good experience for the other two kids. It's train them for the future. But, Riley, I really no, think... No, no, later, Peg. I got this meeting. Oh, well, hi, Mr. Riley. Hi, Mr. Riley. Hi, Pop. Hi, partners. Okay, the meeting of the stockholders of the Riley Lawnmower Company is now called to order. Ow! Oh, my hand! Oh, oh, we gotta buy a gavel. Okay, Treasurer Junior, let's have your report. Well, today we've collected, um, $75. Mm-hmm. And we spent $6 for the weed killer. That leaves $69 cash on hand. Well, that's not bad, partners. Not bad for one week's work. Now, we got to decide how much of the $69 goes for your salaries and how much for profit. Now, uh, how about $15 for salaries? Fifteen? Yeah, and $54 for profits. Do I hear a motion? Yeah. I move the whole $69 be paid out in salaries. Twenty-three for the each of us. Me, Junior, and Winnie. Second the motion. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Nah, you can't do that. <laughs> There's a motion on the floor. Yeah, take a vote. Well... Okay, if you want to vote, you'll get a vote. This is a fair and square outfit. <laughs> okay, now all those in favor of this ridiculous, stupid motion, say aye. Julie? Aye. <laughs> Winnie? Aye. <laughs> and I vote no, so the motion is defeated. Hey, wait a minute. Junior didn't vote. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> well, okay, Junior, let's hear your vote. I vote aye. There you see. I? We win. 51% to 49. Okay, here's the dough. 23 for you. 23 Wait for... Wait a minute. 23 for you, Junior. No, 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 just a minute. Here's yours, Winnie. Oh, boy. No, no, wait, you can't do this. Here's your share, Junior. No, don't take that money, Junior. Oh, boy, 23 bucks. You're out of order. You, you can't get away with this. I'll, I'll take my $10 back. Okay, I move to give Mr. Riley his $10 back and kick him out of the corporation. No way! Second the motion. No fair! All those in favor? Aye. No! Aye! No! Aye! Aye! I mean no! Junior, you can't do this. Okay, Mr. Riley, here's your $10 back. Well, it just ain't legal. You, you can't do it. Oh, yes, we can. It <sighs> says so in the bylaws. Those bylaws are crooked. But you wrote them, Pop. But I... You... This... Oh... Oh, what a revolting development this is. You have just heard the first act of The Life of Riley, starring Scott Glenn as Riley. Now, here's a question you hear everywhere. What'll you have? Taps Blue Ribbon. What'll you have? Taps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> When you hear the fights on the radio With the fighters taking blow for blow This moment that bell begins to sound Is Pabst Blue Ribbon from the very first round What'll you have? Pabst Blue Ribbon What'll you have? Pabst Blue Ribbon What'll you have? Pabst Blue Ribbon Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer Smoother, smoother, smoother flavors That's the sparkle millions favor Taste the smoother, smoother flavor Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer Finest beer served anywhere. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Say, do you want to know how to judge truly fine beer? Well, friend, just make the three-way experts test. One, see the clear color, then look at the creamy head. 
Two, sniff that fragrant blue ribbon blend. Three, taste the flavor the whole world knows. Then you'll agree. Finest beer served anywhere. Pops Blue Ribbon Beer. What'll you have? Pops Blue Ribbon. And now back to the life of Riley, starring Scott Glenn as Riley, with Corey McCune and Justin Baldinger. Well, the Riley Lawn Mowing Company is still, uh, growing concern, only without its president and founder, Chester A. Riley, who was ousted in a shrewdly executed voting maneuver on the part of majority stockholders Junior, Julie, and Winnie, aged 14, 13, and 12 and a half. Respectively. My own son. My own son. Oh, stop it, Riley. My own son stuck a knife in my back. Well, you deserve it. I deserve it? Is, is, is that way for a son to act? Young Henry Ford didn't do it to old Henry Ford. Young Nelson Rockefeller didn't do it to old John Rockefeller. Young Sears didn't do it to old Roebuck, but young Riley can do it to old Riley? That's okay, huh? Well, there's no room for sentiment in business. What kind of stupid remark is that? You said it first. Yeah, and I was right. That was the smartest stupid remark I've ever made. Well, I'll teach them a lesson they'll never forget. Well, there's nothing much you can do about it, dear. Oh, no? Well, take a look at the backyard. Hmm? Yeah. Why, it's a lawnmower. Yeah. Where'd you get it? It's a power lawnmower, and I rented it. What for? With that lawnmower, I can mow lawns in one-tenth the time it takes those kids. So I'm going to hire some boys, pay them next to nothing, undercut Junior's prices, take all their customers away, and put them out of business. That's the kind of man I am. And you're not ashamed to admit it. For heaven's sake, Riley, why don't you leave those kids alone? Now you've got your money back. It ain't the money. I'm going to teach those kids a lesson in business. It'll be an education for them. They've got to learn just because they're in big business, they can't shove the little fellow around. You're the little fella? Why, the three of them together weigh less than you do. I'm going to throw my weight around. They've got to be taught a lesson. You'll see by this time tomorrow, they'll come crawling back to me, begging me to come back in the corporation. Oh, Riley, this is the meanest thing I ever heard of. How can you be so petty, taking advantage of those kids? When I married you, I never realized you had this side to your character. Well, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it now. You're stuck with me. <laughs> I'll show them. They think they got me licked. Well, they'll find out I don't give up that easy. A Riley never says die until he's dead six months. Nonsense. You're no different from my other customers. Digger, it's you. Yes, it is I indeed. Digger Odell, the friendly undertaker. What are you doing here on my threshold? I came to see you on business. On that case, let's not... Stand out here on the street. Come into my parlor and stretch out. I like to see people comfortable during a business discussion. Okay. Oh, dear. What's the matter, Digger? I haven't got my key with me. Ring the bell, will you? Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Someone must be home. Ah, yes. Here comes one of my sons. Hello, Papa. You know my youngest son, Moss Bank. Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, hey, he's getting to be a big boy. Oh, yes. Pretty soon he'll be big enough to help me carry the load. What are you doing with that shovel, son? Just playing, Papa. I'm digging a hole in the backyard. Bully for you. Make it a nice big hole, and Papa will give you something to put in it. I'm buying a new weeping willow tree. Thanks. 
Papa. Charming youth. I believe boys ought to learn how to plant things at an early age. It helps them later on. Now, what did you want to see me about, Riley? Well, Digger, I'd like to mow your lawn for you for a small fee. But your son, Junior, and his friends are doing it for me now. And they're doing a bully job, too. I'll do better. But I made a deal with the boys. We have a verbal contract. Well, break it. Oh, I can't do that. Twenty years in business, and I've never broken my word yet. When I make a promise to a customer, the promise is always carried out. And so is the customer. But you're paying Junior five dollars. I'll do it for two fifty. No, no, I don't approve of price cutting. I tried it once in my business. It was disastrous. A customer came along. I offered to do the job for a hundred. My competitor cut the price to fifty. I got angry and went down to twenty-five. He went down to ten. One thing led to another. We started calling each other insulting names. He kept throwing dirt in my face, and I kept throwing dirt in his face. Nobody was throwing dirt in the customer's face. But Digger, I'll do the job for two fi- uh, two dollars. No, no, Riley. And if you ask me, I don't think it's very nice of you to compete with your son, Junior. Now look, Digger, I didn't come here for a lecture, and if that's going to be your attitude, well, you and me are through. Even if you wanted to, I don't want you for my customer. I'm sorry, dear chum. As far as I'm concerned, there is no hard feelings, and believe me, I always want you for my customer. Well, cheerio. You'd better be shoveling off. And what, Julie say? Why the meeting, Junior? I don't know. She just said to be at the house and... Ah, oh, here comes Julie now. Hiya, Julie. Hi. Well, what's up, Julie? Why'd you call the meeting? Is something wrong? Plenty. You know the weed killer your father made us buy? Well, what about it? It worked good. It kills the weeds. It works too good. It not only kills the weeds, it kills the grass. You're kidding! Honest. I went to the Petersons' house. You should have seen the lawn. There just isn't any grass. Just a couple of patches here and there, and I checked all the other lawns. They're just as bad. Holy smokes, all of them? All of them. What do we do? Mr. Peterson says if we have to put in a new lawn or he'll make trouble for us. Yeah, we'll have to work for weeks and we won't make a cent. Well, we'll lose money. It's all your father's fault, Junior. He got us to use that cheap weed killer. Gee, guys, I'm sorry. Well, a lot of good that does us. Yeah, what do we do? Well, watch it. Here comes your old man, the big brain. Cut it out, Julie. Well, 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 if it isn't the big businessman. Aw, oh, lay off, will you, Pop? Well, what's the matter, gang? Why the long faces? You look worried. Why shouldn't we? It's all your fault, Mr. Riley. On account of you, we'll probably lose all our customers. Oh, so you found out about the jam I got you into, huh? <laughs> I didn't expect you to cave in this fast. <laughs> now look, I don't want to be too tough on you. I think you've learned your lesson. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come back in the organization. You want to come back? On one condition, that I'm the boss. I decide who gets what. What profits there are. I'll have full responsibility. And as far as you're concerned, you kids have just got jobs. You're working for me, okay? But, Pop, there's something you ought to know. Oh, I don't want to know nothing. Yes or no? But, Pop, we just... Shut up, Junior! Is it a deal? You'll have to pay for all the damages if you're the boss. What damages? That weed killer of yours ruined all the lawns. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised at you, Junior. Just because you don't want me running things, you make up a cock and bull story like that and expect me to fall for it? <laughs> well, I'm just a little bit too smart for you. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Riley. No use trying to fool you. Ah, uh, you bet there isn't. But, Pop, I'm not. Quiet, Junior! That's right. You're too smart for us dopey kids. Yep. Well, what do you say, kids? Is it a deal? 
Am I the boss? Yes, sir, Mr. Riley. Winnie, I'm the boss? Oh, sure. Junior? Okay, if that's what you want, boss. <laughs> now, now, just so that there's no misunderstanding, I got a little agreement here that I want you to sign. Okay, here's a pen. Okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, no, read it. I want you to know what you're signing so you won't say that I tricked you. This paper just says that I have full charge and absolute control. That's okay by us. Uh-huh. There. Sign, Winnie. Now you, Junior. Now, that does it. Now, let this be a lesson to you kids. If you want to get somewhere in business, it ain't luck, it ain't tricks, it's brains that does it. Yeah, you taught us a lesson, all right. Hey there, Julie. I want to talk to you. Uh-oh, it's Mr. Peterson. Well, Julie, what are you going to do about my lawn? I advise you... No, oh, no, 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 just a minute, mister. If you got something to say about your lawn, you better talk to me. What have you got to do with it? Well, I have full charge and responsibility. Oh, is that so? Yeah, these kids just work for me. I got a paper to prove it there. See. <laughs> well, I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> I just spoke to my lawyer and I found out you can't sue a minor. But seeing you're in charge, I want to tell you something. I'm not only speaking for myself, but for 10 other people as well. Unless you repair the damage your phony weed killer did to our lawns, we're going to drag you into court and make you pay through the big fat nose of yours. Goodbye. Wait! Uh, I'm a minor! Wait, wait! They did it! The kids did it! I didn't do it! But Mr. Riley, you're the boss! Well... Yeah, you're it! Well, you... Why, you... You swindlers, you tricked me! Why didn't you tell me about the weed killer? I told you, Pop, you wouldn't believe me. Yeah, you are too smart for us. Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Riley. If you want to get somewhere in business, it ain't luck, it ain't tricks. I know, I know, it's brains. And believe me, I wish I knew where to get some. The Rileys will be back in just a moment. But right now, remember... The quality that has carried Pap's Blue Ribbon around the world is yours for the asking. The next time the waiter asks you, what'll you have? Tell him you want the world's number one favorite, Pap's Blue Ribbon. Finest beer served anywhere. But Peg, you don't seem to realize the spot I'm in. Every night when I come home, dead tired, I'll have to put in a couple of hours on those lawns. And all day Saturday, and Sunday, and holidays, and my two weeks vacation next <laughs> summer. Well, what's there to laugh about? Well, I think it's very funny. I don't want to be an I told you so, but, uh, I told you so. Yeah, so, all right, you told me so. But I wouldn't be in this jam if it wasn't for that Julie. At least my junior warned me, but I didn't listen. That junior's okay. He plays square. He's a real honest kid. He tried to do me a real good turn, and I'll never forget it. Now, I wonder how I can trick him into doing those lawns for me. Uh, let's see, what if I tell him that uh, I'm sick, and the doctor won't let me get up out of bed? <laughs> yeah, that's the ticket. The Life of Riley is brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Central Way with the best wishes of Pabst Blue Ribbon dealers from coast to coast. See you next week. Noah Mason speaking. You have been listening to The Life of Riley, recreated by Lincoln Community Playhouse, featuring our Playhouse on the Air performers. Evie Rawlings, Scott Glenn, Clara Hawkins, Noah Mason, Danny Johnson, Andrew Donnelly, Corey McCune, Justin Baldinger. Playhouse on the Air was directed by Maury Enders with Barb Armstead as stage manager and Sarah Bornea as sound technician. Music composed and performed by Jack Forbes Wilson. Playhouse on the Air is a program of Lincoln Community Playhouse in Lincoln, Nebraska. For more information on our programs, please go to lincolnplayhouse.com. And if you enjoyed our program, please like and subscribe.